Hi, my name is Tim Griffith, and uh, we're going to do a class on precision rifle. And th this class, when I taught it years ago, uh, it was a 40-hour course. So we're, as we go through the course, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to explain what we did on the range and what we do as we go through uh, the course. But to, to give you a little bit of my background, in the mid-60s, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Fast forward to 1984, and I was on the number one SWAT team in the country. Uh, I was an assaulter, door kicker, moved into sniper, and then uh, sniper trainer, and then I spent 20 years as a firearms instructor, and I ended my career at managing an explosive and ballistics test range. So I do have an extensive background on on the type of uh, stuff that we're doing here. And this precision rifle course is something that people have been asking for, so we're going to try to give it to you. It'll be in several sessions, uh, because like I said, it's a 40-hour course, so we're going to go through that. The first thing we're going to talk about is minutes of angle. Minute of angle. What is a minute of angle? I could sit up here and waste 20 minutes of your time and draw a circle and explain to you all about it. But all you need to know as a as a precision rifle shooter, it is one inch at 100 yards. That's not meters, that's yards, okay? We, we don't deal in meters in my business. So, so if that's one inch at 100 yards, that would be two at 200, three at 300, Four at 400. So if you if you move if you're shooting 500 yards and move that scope, uh, one minute of angle is going to move your five. It's going to move your strike five inches to the right or left, whatever you're doing. And the problem that most people have is they're scared to death to reach up and grab that knob and turn their, their windage knob. Don't be afraid. Count your clicks. Count them back. And it'll be right on target every time. So just remember, one inch at 100 yards, your scopes are either in quarters, halves, or one minute of angle. That's how your scopes are set up in this day and age. The footage I'm going to give you, or the, the, the course I'm going to give you, I'm not going to crop, delete, anything. You're going to get the raw footage all the way through. So if you hear me screw, the, screw it up, it's because I screwed it up, but I'm not going to cut it out. I'm going to teach you just like I would teach a class. The first morning of the class, this morning when we start out, we'll cover the minute of angles. We would move to the range, and actually I would take the guys out and we'd get a perfect 100-yard zero. And I'm not talking quarter of an inch to the right, quarter inch to the left, high or low, that X is going to be cut out. That's how we're going to start the course. And that way, I can look at the, the, look at the people on the range and see who is my best shooters and who's going to have problems. I hold my classes, I used to hold my classes to eight people, no more than eight people. And that was perfect for, for me to kind of keep an eye on everybody and give everybody a chance to get one-on-one -on -one instruction at one time or another in the 40-hour course that we're teaching. How do you figure your windage? How do you turn windage into um, minutes of angle? Uh, some, some people have a hard time understanding it, but what it turns out to is range times velocity divided by 10. And that's for your 308, 30 out 6, and your 300 win mag. It works on it too. The range is the distance you're shooting. That's the distance you're shooting. The velocity is how fast the wind is blowing. And you divide it by 10. So if we're shooting 300 yards, and we have a 10 mile an hour wind, that equals 30, divide by 10, that's three minutes of angle. If, 
you, if you shoot shooting 300 yards times 3 equals 9, that equals 9 tenths of an inch. Always round up. That would be one minute of angle. So we always round up. So if if you're to if you're to a point of uh, if you're if you're shooting quarter minute clicks and it comes out to between half and three quarters, always round up, always round it up, never round down when it comes to that. Now remember, the range is the distance you're shooting, the velocity times the velocity of the wind, and that gets you where you need to be. Now we also have another formula, range times velocity. Man, I screwed that one up. Divided by 15. That's your 223, 25 out of 6, and it even works on, on my 22250. So, remember, the range we're shooting, we're shooting at uh, 500 yards, and we're shooting uh, 30 mile an hour wind be 150 that would be 10 10 minutes of angle so things things change uh, the faster the bullet flies the, uh, the way things change that's the formula that the military used the, the range time velocity divided by 10 is what the military has used uh, probably since the 19, late 1950s, early 1960s. Um, the 223, when it came out, they developed the other formula. So we're at uh, we're that point now. Now, uh, let's talk about the circle. The shooter is always at number six. This is a clock. The shooter is at number six, always at number six. We're going to talk about range books, and that's how we're going to, uh, that's how we, we know where we're at. The winds, <clears throat> when they blow, they are either uh, full minutes of angle or, half, or full value or half value. They're, there's no in between. A full value would be directly across from you. You know, we got your clock. A half half would be that would be half minutes of angle. So that'd be one and seven and eleven and five. And this would be three and nine. That's how your wind uh, blows. But you're always a shooter. It's always at the number six position. Anytime the wind blows from behind you or in front of you, that is zero. Has no effect on your bullet at all. So you can have a 50 mile an hour wind and if it's blowing right in your face or from behind you, it's not going to affect affect anything that you do. It's not going to affect you at all. I'm moving kind of fast here, but you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to go in and relook at the film. Now let's cover. Uh, Mirage. In the old days, well, when I was starting out, people really didn't understand how a mirage affected you until people got really into it. And but when you start shooting in this program, in these programs, and you get really going, 
you have to have a passion for this because it's not an easy process to uh, to get everything together. You have to really work at it. And Mirage, learn how to read the Mirage. It is totally a different ball game. You have actually four types of Mirage. You have your Mirage that goes from right to left, just barely moving up and down. And the thing about a Mirage is, before we go any further, is it just it doesn't happen on hot days. It happens on cold days. It could be 30 below zero. And you look through your spot scope when the sun's shining on that uh, snow or off the ground, you can still get the same waves as you do. And once you watch your mirages, this would probably be a one MOA mirage. You'll, you'll figure it out if you spend enough time in the field. That's probably a one minute of angle mirage. But uh, you can have no wind, and if you have a mirage moving from right to left or left to right, you still have to make adjustments on your rifle scope. Then you have the mirage that is really, really, not really fast, but it's moving. Uh, a little faster than that, it'll be that'll be a two or three minute of angle mirage. Mirage, and that way, uh, and you, you just have to just have to learn it. It's just it's something I can stand here and talk to you all day about, but until you get out and look at it through your spot and scope, you can't. You will never understand it. And then you have that friggin' mirage that just is so friggin' tight that it's moving across there. And that can be anywhere from a 3 to a 10 MOA mirage. You just, like I said, it's just a matter of looking and looking and looking, playing with it and figuring out what you're going to do. So th this mirage here is moving really fast. It... Uh, it's just really hard to explain until you look at it through your scope, but it's moving really fast right to left. And then there's one other mirage. It's that son of a bitch that goes around and it goes like this. And when you're looking through it, that's the mirage that screws you, screws the shooter. You can't predict it. So if you're, if you're at, uh, on a range someplace and you have a mirage like that, See if you can wait it out till it changes, because uh, it's just one of those mirages that you really have a, a real tough time uh, shooting through. When I was in the Marine Corps, they had a saying that uh, Lights up, sights up, lights down, sights down. Well, that tells me if if the lights up and you have to move your sights up, you're going to shoot low if it's on a really bright day. If the lights down, sights down, you're going to shoot a little bit high if the lights down. It's just the way that the light affects the the uh, front sight. And remember, that crosshair on your scope is considered a front sight. I hate war stories, but I'm going to tell you a little bit of story about 1990, Camp Perry, Ohio. I was back there with a group of guys. It was President's 100. Everybody was shooting to see who was going to make the top 100 uh, to be on the President's 100. We were shooting well. We were in the running. I got back to the 600-yard line, and it was a bright friggin' day. I'd been smoking and joking with a guy I hadn't seen for 15 years, walking back, and instead of looking at my book and figuring my data and seeing what a bright day would do, I assumed, I made an ass out of myself, I assumed that everything was going to be perfect. The first shot downrange, I got what they call the Maggie drawers. I 
That's when the red flag comes up and it says you've just fucked yourself. First one I ever had in my life. It was so bright, I put my zero in there for 600 yards and I shot right underneath the friggin' target. Well, you know what that did to me? That just threw me out of the entire, not only did it blow my fucking mind, it blew me totally out of the running. Because back there, all the sh top shooters that show up there, they are uh, spots on the President's 100 is always considered by X's. It'll be a, a score with 10 X's, 5 X's, whatever it is. That's how they score them. So everything is so friggin' tight. So make sure that we're going to talk about range books in a little bit, but make sure that that's that that light doesn't screw you up. And what it does is on your front sight of your rifle or your scope. Now remember, your scope is considered that's considered your front sight. What happens is the sun will shine down from one angle or another and it'll throw a shadow on one side of your front sight. It gives you that optical illusion that you're uh, looking at your front sight exactly where you're supposed to, but in all reality, you're off just a little teeny bit. So. When that sun shines down on you, if it shines from behind you, from the side, and what it, what the what the sun does to me, if it's coming in off this side over here, it pushes me to the right or to the left. Most people will pull them to the. It depends on what you, how your eye works. Some people will be pulled to the uh, to the left. So remember, lights up, sides up. Lights down, sights down. You know, this would be a good time for you to reach down and hit that subscribe button. This is just number one of probably five or six sessions we're going to do. Uh, and the final session we're going to do, we're going to go over to Boise to double tap range. Mark is going to allow us to uh, use his range at that time. So uh, hit subscribe, share with other people, and uh, we'll do another video and in a few days, we'll have another video out, and uh, we'll be moving on.